what you will do. Come on then, you spineless bastard! <laughs> Hi guys, I just want to take a second to thank all my patrons here who have donated to me. No matter how much they've donated to me, it really means a lot to me. And if you guys want, you can check out my Patreon and help support me continue to make Yaoi videos. Thanks guys. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Chess of Blades. In the last episode, Rivian decided it was a good idea to go get raped in the garden by Saber during the night. So here we are. And, um, <laughs> he's hesitating, but he, um, he's already come this far, so he's, um, he's willing to, <laughs> he's willing to just have Saber totally ravish him. I hesitate for a moment, but knowing I've already come this far, it doesn't take long for me to accept such an invitation. Then Saber starts to lead me towards the hedge maze, moving at a leisurely enough pace so that I can keep up. Could I ask you a question? It's been nagging at the back of my mind for a while, but... Why have you been paying so much attention to me? Is it because I have a really big ass? A lot of guys tell me that. <laughs> Saber's eyes flick down towards me, narrowing faintly. It seems to be a thoughtful expression, rather than an irritated one, though. Do you know my father, perhaps? Or is it possible we've met somewhere before? It's uh, not really like that. The simplest way to put things is, uh, well, I've been watching you since the celebration started. Can anyone else just <laughs> not hear? Saber's voice over the music. It's like I love the music, but like I cannot even hear his voice anymore. <laughs> Just <laughs> he's so quiet now, now that he's not Scottish anymore. And a lot of people in the comments were just telling me how how he's not Scottish, and it's like no, he's not how he's not Irish, and it's just like okay, guys, like I don't know the difference. The slightly guilty way he avoids my gaze for a moment catches me off guard. What... what reason does he have to be watching me? I never noticed him until today. Was I just entirely blind to his presence? I guess before... <laughs> before he proved how much of a man he was earlier in that fight, you just weren't attracted to him. No, with a statue like his, that seems impossible. That means... He must have been concealing himself. How does he do that? <laughs> we definitely saw him before today. Wait, did we? Yeah, I don't think we met yeah, Saber for the first time. I had my reasons, though I was under the impression that you were a very different man. That's why you took me by surprise. His voice is still so quiet. I was still talking and I didn't realize he was talking. And the voice is already up at full full volume. There's nothing I can do. <laughs> not in a bad way, either. I'm not one to involve myself with nobles, but you're not like any of the other ones I've met before. He comes to a halt, and I stop beside him, studying his features with confusion. Oh, um... Uh... I'm different than those other nobles. Why would I ever say I'm the same as them? <laughs> Special snowflake? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> that should have been, um... <laughs> that should have been an achievement for for to trust an incubus. <laughs> That, that should have popped up when Kenta was like... <laughs> I'm sure he didn't mean that racially, though, when the Black Heart comment came up. <laughs> Seriously, that would have been perfect in that game. <laughs> I guess I'm a little different from most other noblemen. They've all got far less fabulous hair... <laughs> 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 They've all got less fabulous hair for one thing. 
Of course, I also don't stoop to playing most of their games. I don't understand the thrill they get out of it. And even if one, one, one can make great gains from attacking one's enemies, it just doesn't seem worth the risk. Well, perhaps. But still, I'd like to be someone with a more fearsome, strong presence like you and Kieran. I could get a lot more things done that way. Strength or hardiness doesn't make for a good man. It's caring for others, isn't it? For a while, I believe no noble man ever cared for anything beyond his wardrobe and his riches. I've seen too many who have treated common folk like dirt beneath their boots. So he was totally ready to kill Hazel, and then he like kissed, he fucking swapped he, not not even spit. He swapped blood with us <laughs> in the storage room, and he was just like, "Okay, like, uh, I won't kill Hazel. I'll, I'll set her free." Like, uh, oh, I mean, okay. I'm not gonna question his his um motives or his resolve. With a heavy sigh that makes his, that makes his broad chest rise and fall like a crumbling mountain, Saber offers a pained laugh. His eyebrows knitting together. I've made a mistake, Rivian. I think my own anger's blinded me to everything else. And I've become the same as the very people I despised. I guess getting a hot piece of ass really opened his eyes to how much of an asshole he's been himself. He bitterly clenches one fist, staring down at his bloodied bandages still. You're still walking around with bloody band- what? The fight was hours ago! <laughs> you can change your bandages or wash your hands. I don't know if I understood the meaning behind his words. His voice sounds... strained, rife with regret. But where does that pain stem from? Is it something in his past? If that's the case, it would probably be callous to dig it up too much now. Maybe it's better to just comfort him. <laughs> well, Saber, I don't think there's anything despicable about you. You're a little rough around the edges, maybe, and you did have me shaking in my boots during our first meeting, but I can tell you have a warm heart. And I bet you have a really warm something else. <gasps> Don't be so shocked. <laughs> I think about sex too. I'm a I'm a little slut, remember? Saber stares at me like I just suggested wearing brown shoes with black trousers. Oh, the whore! <laughs> Literally, I had no idea Rivian was such a diva. Actually, yes, I did. I don't know why I said that. I I knew he was a diva. <laughs> this hair comment, this this fashion comment. Yeah, we all knew. But I, I only offered an embarrassed chuckle and continue anyway. The way you treated Kieran, even after you defeated him, even the way you were uh, gentle with me earlier, it wasn't what I expected, just from your appearance. Was he gentle with, with Rivian? He bled in her mouth. <laughs> and then he wouldn't even let us, like, break off the kiss. Rivian said something like that. Is that, is that being gentle? And maybe it's gentle for whatever 1700s or 1800s time this is. <laughs> maybe that's gentle back then. I can see now, though, that you're not the angry tiger I really thought you were. Well, maybe still a tiger, but one with a penchant for belly rubs and ear scratches. <clears throat> that metaphor kind of drifted, of course. Although I wouldn't mind rubbing your belly and scratching behind your ear. Despite the ungracefulness of my reply, a slow smile starts to warm Saber's features. I wouldn't mind blowing raspberries on your stomach, either. <laughs> I think that would be really romantic. His piercing eyes soften, lighting up with a hopeful glimmer, and he reaches out a hand towards me. Though he looks like he has a hairy stomach, ugh. <laughs> the fabric of his bandage is a little scratchy as it brushes my cheek, and it gets a little blood on me too. <laughs> but I find the warmth of his palm surprisingly enjoyable when he lightly cups my face. As I gaze up at him, I really do have the sense I'm being watched by some kind of powerful beast. 
But it doesn't make me feel afraid. If anything, it's almost comforting, like having a bear line as your protector. Rivian, I'm sorry. I... He starts to lean in, his eyes half-closing, gently tilting my face up towards his own. My heart picks up to a fever's pace as I stand on my toes a little, drawn in by a compulsion I hardly even understand. <gasps> At that moment, I catch a glimpse of a shadow behind Saber's back. That I recognize. That shadow. <clears throat> Who is it? Acting on impulse, I grab Saber's waist and sharply pull him down to the ground with all my might. <gasps> sure enough, something sharp goes whizzing over our heads a moment later, softly thudding to the ground nearby. Arden, why are you interrupting my nighttime tryst with Saber? A small knife. What's that guy who is throwing knives at Arden? A quiet grunt of disdain comes from nearby, followed by the distinct sound of a blade being unsheathed. Saber leaps up to his feet within a moment. Grabbing me by my coat, he hauls me up and shoves me behind him, casting me into the protective shadow of his towering back. As I thought, the assassin from earlier is the one who begins to approach us. The sword in his hand catches the moonlight and gleams with murderous intent. Saber, we should run. We're unarmed. I hiss out to him, tugging on the back of his coat, but he doesn't budge. Is he a madman? Giant or not, a sword's a sword and a lot more dangerous than his fists. Oh, come on, Rivian, have you seen his fists? Those things are deadly weapons. <laughs> you should see him when he fists a man. You, you might, you might. I wonder if, I wonder if Rivian will get fisted. Maybe. Yeah, I'd like to see that. You coming for me now, are you? Good. I'll send you back as a message. Oh no! <laughs> is he like... Is he, um... Is he like, um, dissenting from the Ignatius people and now they're trying to kill him? Oh no. <laughs> Saber growls a low th a low threat, his enraged glare focused on the assassin. Impossible! Do they... Do they know each other? I couldn't have my match today, but you'll do. Come on then, you spineless bastard! Now that's the safer... <laughs> I know, the one that's always screaming in my ear and it's like... Just horrible, just horrible, horrible voice lines that just make my, my ears bleed. And with that, he abruptly pushes off from the grass and charges forward straight for the shadowy man. <clears throat> Despite the advantage he has with a blade, Saber's cold confidence seems like it throws the assassin off. He quickly dodges this side, moving with great speed thanks to his wi wiry looking form. As I saw earlier though, Saber's far from slow. With remarkable swiftness, he stops his charge and directs his weight towards the assassin's new position, throwing himself towards the other man. Uh. I grit my teeth together. I can't believe he's challenging someone with a sword just like that. Is he really sure of his abilities? Ha! As the assassin swipes out with his blade, Saber twists his body nearly avoiding the razor-sharp edge. Then he throws forward a savage kick which slams right into the side of the darkly clad man's leg. Yeah. The blow makes the assassin stumble, but he leaps back far enough that Saber can't follow up with another strike. He's remarkably agile and quick, just like a cat. An evil, angry cat. <laughs> what an apt metaphor. I watch in petrified silence as they lash out over and over, circling each other like two fighting animals. Um, <laughs> I like this this depiction of um, Saber apparently just going hand to hand with this. Well, not even hand to hand, hand to sword. This 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 can't be a good idea. <laughs> but okay, Saber, you're a manly man. 
Even though Saber has no weapon, he he's evidently evenly matched against the armed man. Is he really? <laughs> wow, he's really good with his hands. The aura coming from him is different from earlier, too. It's not excitement and competitiveness, but a potent, bitter rage. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, Saber swings out one of his fists right at the assassin's hand holding the sword. <laughs> Why did... Okay, we just shut our eyes because we were so, um... We were just so upset, or afraid, I guess? I mean... Okay... There's no way! He can't! He can't what? Did he get stabbed? But when I open one eye, I see something entirely unexpected. The assassin's wrist is trapped in Saber's grip, and the sword is lying on the ground by their feet. <laughs> wow, I guess you just were not... you did not believe in Saber. Saber's other hand is firmly grasping the man's neck, squeezing so hard that it looks like he's starting to struggle for air. I want you to tell them. Saber's done with your filthy, treacherous game. <gasps> At those menacing words, the assassin's kicking and squirming stops, and he nods his head desperately. Saber's lips are peeled back to reveal his sharp teeth, bared so fiercely that it looks like he's about to take a bite out of his captive's flesh. God, I wish that were me. There's not even a bead of perspiration on his forehead. Does that mean there was never really any contest? Does that mean he isn't sweaty and... God, I want him to sweat, though. I want him to sweat over me as he fucks the life out of me. Saber was superior all along? <laughs> we seem so surprised. We really did not believe in in um, Saber's virile masculinity. <laughs> now scamper back to your masters before I bash your head open on the ground. And don't come near us again. So he's just totally gonna let him go? I mean, I doubt, like, things are gonna be okay for you, Saber, but fine. He throws the assassin backwards and the man tumbles to the grass. A moment later, though, he leaps back up to his feet, taking off into the maze at a sprint. Why wouldn't you just kill him? It isn't until his footsteps and figure disappear entirely that I realize I'm still on the ground watching Saber with my jaw agape. Well, maybe Rivian would tattle on him. <laughs> I hastily push myself up, brushing fragments of grass off my trousers. Luckily, Saber doesn't seem to have noticed my unrefined position, since he's still glaring in the direction the assassin ran off towards. However, when I tentatively approach Saber's side, he turns towards me, brow still deeply furrowed. You should head back inside. His words, while gruff, are concerned enough that I can't muster an indignant response. He definitely just saved us both. I shudder to think what would have happened if I had been alone. Well, he you wouldn't- be all right? You're not injured or anything? Well, the assassin wouldn't have attacked us, would he? He was trying to kill Saber, wasn't he? I think. He shakes his head grimly, rolling his shoulders back. <sighs> Thanks to you spotting him first. Could have ended up a lot nastier. <laughs> Are we just gonna continue our stroll around the garden? Oh well, forget about that assassination attempt. Let's just enjoy the night sky together. And let's get back to that... Get back to that fucking we were gonna have. Saber curls an arm around my waist and starts to pull me out of the garden. His steps a lot more hurried than before. I have to send my jog to keep up growing tense from the silence that falls between us. We make it back to the main hall without any further words. However, when Saber lets go of me and continues walking in the direction of the main castle exit, I grab onto his coat. <sighs> he turns to look at me question questioningly, seemingly surprised that I stopped him. Back there. You knew that assassin, didn't you? How? My impatient curiosity makes Saber's mouth tighten into a dour line. His eyes burn into me for a long moment with almost ferocious intensity. 
But after a lengthy pause, he lets out a deep sigh and shakes his head. Old acquaintances, that's all. Loose ends left untied. Now you'll have to excuse me for cutting off our date so sharply, but I should be getting back before anything else happens. <clears throat> wow, he's just not going to explain anything? I bite my lip in frustration when he turns his back to me, but my heart briefly leaps when he glances over his shoulder, a faint smirk reappearing on his face. You should come to the arena tomorrow. I'll be fighting Kieran again. And I'd fight a lot better with some encouragement from a lovely fan. <laughs> Is he slightly talking in his accent again? <laughs> he flashes a little sly grin at me before turning to stalk off towards the large castle doors. I watch him until he leaves, feeling a mixture of disappointment and lingering excitement. His last words still echo in my ears. It's strange, but I'm rather miffed that he left so suddenly, even though I was a little loath to acknowledge that our meeting our meeting is a date. After the castle doors slam shut behind Saber, I muster the strength to drag myself up the stairs and back to my room. Along the way, I keep my eyes open for anyone else who looks like they want to make skewered Rivian for a midnight snack, but everything seems quiet. But... But the one who really wanted to make a skewered Rivian was Saber himself, wasn't it? Ha ha. <laughs> I make sure to lock the door to my chambers tightly before stripping off my clothes and diving into the warm, welcome embrace of my bed. I'm still so pent up with tension. <laughs> Are we going to jerk off? <laughs> it's, it's, it sounds like we're going to jerk off. He's stripping off his clothes. He's all pent up and he's in the warm embrace of his bed. Um, I'm still so pent up with the tension, though, that it's next to impossible to just fall asleep. Thoughts of Saber the Assassin and the two's relationship are still spinning around in my head. I just wish I could figure out what it all means. But at the same time, a little, I'm a little afraid to learn the truth. If Saber's involved in some shady business, maybe it's almost better if I didn't know. With my mind full of discomforting questions, I eventually drift off, succumbing to the pull of weariness. Okay, that was a really weird uh, moan or grunt. Gentle sunlight awakens me the next morning. I feel unusually refreshed, so much that I actually hop out of bed with a sense of energy. What madness is this? Usually I always get up with the same excitement as a man heading to the gallows. Well, best not to look a gift horse in the mouth. My stomach wastes no time in grumbling at me for breakfast, so I pull on my clothes and do a bit of grooming before heading out into the hallway. I guess we're just really um, excited to get more saber dick. Or just get Saber Dick for the first time. It doesn't take long for my thoughts to flick back to the previous night as I walk along, however. That assassin. I really hope he takes Saber's threat to heart. If not, well, I'd best be on my toes regardless. Of course, this is the last day of the celebration before I departure tomorrow. So I only have to make it through 24 hours without getting shanked. Not too hard, right? Right? Uh-oh, we're gonna get shanked. When I walk into the main hall, I'm greeted with the sight of numerous guests streaming out of the castle gates, presumably headed to the festival. I might as well join them, even though I strolled past some of the shops the other day, there were a lot more I hadn't gotten a chance to see. As I turn to head down the stairs... Caribbean. Plan on catching the games today? A cheerful voice calls out to me, and I turn to see Kiran striding up, waving a hand. Ooh, Kiran. Ooh, look at him, guys. So much better than Saber, come on. Oh, hello. The game's right. Not sure I could stomach all that excitement again, to be honest. I might faint. I chuckle playfully, but inwardly acknowledge it's not really a joke. You certainly are a spectacular pansy, Rivian. I do plan to head out to the festival for a little while, though. 
Maybe I'll swing by, assuming one of you hasn't chopped the other's head off by then. You certainly should. I'm sure Saber would appreciate you cheering him on. Boost his morale, you know. He winks at me, his lips spreading into an impish grin. By gods, does everyone know what I've done with Saber by now? Oh dear gods, does he know? Uh, <clears throat> yes. Well, I think he'd be just fine without me. There's definitely nothing innocent about the look Kiron's wearing. In fact, it rivals the one on Saber's face yesterday. He was in quite an energetic mood this morning. I wonder what's got him so fired up. It could be the duel, but I had a feeling it was something else. You had a feeling it was this sweet ass? How dare you, sir! I hesitate for a moment. Does Kiron know about Saber's fake pers- <laughs> Does Kiron know that Saber's just totally faking his accent? I still don't completely understand why Saber is faking his accent. Did did they explain that properly? I don't remember. I don't think they did. I I don't think so. They're obviously very close to the point where they almost seem like more than friends. Kiron, do you mind if I ask you something about you and Saber? In response to my tentative question, Kiran nods, arching an eyebrow inquisitively. Are you... together? I just had the feeling yesterday that, beyond all that rivalry, you're quite intimate with each other. Oh, come on, they're not together. I s uh, what, what if he says yes? <laughs> Are we going to be really offended? <laughs> Well, there was no way to phrase that delicately, but I probably managed to do it in the most awkward fashion known to man. As soon as I trail off, Kiran stares at me in utter disbelief. Wait, you really... You thought we were a couple just because of us getting into our sparring? It was really intense sparring. I mean, when he puts it like that, I guess it does sound a bit silly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rivian. <laughs> oh, I can see why he likes you, really. After recovering from a fit of laughter, Kiran shakes his head. Are you saying I'm an airheaded bimbo? Well, excuse me for misinterpreting things. You're blushing, too. So cute. It's too bad I didn't get to you first. Oh, it is too bad, Kiron. But hey, I'm not off the market yet. He offers me a broad, teasing smirk after exhaling a faint sigh of disappointment. Get to me? I haven't the faintest clue what you're talking about. No one's gotten to me. I haven't been gotten. <laughs> He's so been gotten. Right, yes, naturally. Well, if you'll pardon me, I'm going to head out to the arena to start practicing. Don't forget to stop by. If you wanted to cheer for me instead of Saber, I wouldn't protest. Wiggling his fingers at me mischievously. Mischievously? Mischievously, Kiran turns to stride towards the castle exit, still chuckling to himself. I'm glad I could be such a source of entertainment for you, smug bastard. Despite my annoyance, though, it's hard for me to really get angry at him. So, so... Off topic, but like, does is everyone else at the castle, um, just totally cool with Hazel just magically reappearing, without any explanation? Like, do, do, does does Linnaeus care? Does Arden care? Does the king care? Does anyone care? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. We just haven't. We haven't even. I haven't even seen Arden since Hazel got back, right? Or the Inquisitor. So, like, I guess they just went home. <laughs> like, job well done. They're gone. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I can tell that Kiran's a good man. He's just one of those people who carries himself with an earnest confidence and kindness. It's strangely refreshing being around him and Saber. They don't feel the need to be co to coyly beat around the bush or remain withdrawn, and that straightforwardness feels much more comfortable than the idea of courtly intrigue and games. But it feels like we live in different worlds. I wonder if one like theirs would ever be open to someone like me, or if I'd even be suited for it. You're not enough of a man, Rivian. You're not enough of a man to be in their world.
While brooding over such things silently to myself, I head out to the castle grounds in the same direction Kiran went. The day is beautiful and warm, and the festival appears to be back in full swing. Vendors stand at every corner, sworn by various guests eager to see what exotic goods are being offered, and the air is rich with the scent of foods both sweet and savory. Not far in the distance, I spy the large pit of the arena where the large crowd is gathered. <sighs> For a variety of reasons, I'm not really in the mood to go spectate right now. I don't even think I can show my face in front of Kiran until my pride's recovered a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I decide to stroll in the opposite direction instead, moving with the flow of people streaming down the road. Along the way, I start to piece together a thoroughly unhealthy breakfast from the various stalls I pass, munching contentedly on various sweets and fried delicacies. Do I feel guilty indulging in horribly fattening foods after being flanked by those two ridiculously well-muscled, good-looking men yesterday, you ask? Not one bit. Some of us just aren't suited to six-packs and bulging biceps. They would ruin my soft and boyish charm. Oh god, Rivian. <laughs> As I placate my self-worth while wandering through the festival, my eyes are drawn to large market stalls that has numerous ornate masks, masks on display. Ah, that's right, the masquerade is tonight, isn't it? Oh, the masquerade hasn't even happened yet, has it? Yeah, because the masquerade was the same night I think we found Hazel. I thought it sounded pretty exciting at first, but now I find my enthusiasm has all but vanished. I'm starting to feel like it's just another game for nobles, a more blatant way to hide their true natures from each other. For a moment, I hesitate, wondering if I should give in and purchase one of the pretty masks. Why? That one looks... the little that pink one over there looks pretty. Looks like it's perfect for Rivian. <laughs> But in the end, I decide against it. Oh no, I wonder if that creepy guy's gonna talk to us again. <laughs> oh no. I'll go find a better use for my money, like on more of those cakes. Just as I start to head deeper in the festival, the voice of an excited girl passing by suddenly catches my ear. Celeste, perhaps? Oh, Adeline! I can't believe you missed the fight. It was so intense. One of the poor fighters even got wounded. Poor thing. There was blood everywhere. <laughs> Could that be Saber? Or maybe someone Seder sexily beat to a pulp? Um... <laughs> um, okay, well, Rivian's pretty shocked about it. So, I'm gonna end this episode here, guys. Uh, I guess in the next episode we'll figure out whether Saber has done the bloodying or has been bloodied himself. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye! Bye.